Welcome to the channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome to part three of the shock therapy upgrade project. Um, so, quick recap. I don't want to waste too much of time. I want to get right into this, but um, part one, we took the shocks off. We sent them into shock therapy. Part two, we got the shocks back. Put them back on the car, did some light testing, and now here we are, part three. We are going to hit these whoops that you see behind me and then we're gonna put the frames side by side. So it's important to me uh, to do more than just tell you about a product. Um, you get lots of people online just saying, hey, look at this product, it's awesome. you know. And then you've, that's what you gotta go with, it's just their word. I like to, to make sure that we provide you guys with some comparisons, some, some side by side shots of them, or at least some sort of data to actually show you guys what kind of improvement uh, that product is that has made uh, on the car. Like, when I blew my belt uh, the first time and I wanted to do clutch work, um, I worked with KWI Clutching to, to bring you a full in-depth tutorial and how-to video on how to service your own clutches uh, and how to, you know, make all that stuff work on your own. And then, every time I did a tune, you know, I would do zero to 60 times and I would actually show you just how much faster the car got after the tune. Um, and Today is no different. Rather than just telling you about these shocks being awesome, I'm going to show you why these shocks are awesome. So let's uh, not waste any more time. Let's get into some side-by-side -side shots.
Yeah, he's getting full full drop right there. That's awesome. Okay, it is review time, and uh, I've actually been really looking forward to this day. It's kind of been like a, a kid on Christmas. Um, really just looking forward to getting out and seeing what these things can do. Um, just a quick disclaimer here. I don't want anybody to think that everything that we're about to say uh, is is fake in some kind of way. We're consumers. Um, Shock Therapy did not reach out to us and ask us to make this video. Um, this is just our honest opinion. You know, we're not here to kind of fool you into thinking one thing or another. Um, so don't I don't want you to think that. So with that in mind, let's move into the review, starting from the very beginning. Uh, the the process in which we got it started. Um, you have to set up an appointment, which was news to me, but I think it was really it was really a good thing uh, in the sense that you knew what day your car was going to get worked on, you knew what day your shocks were going to get worked on, so you knew what day you had to send them in, and you knew what day you were going to get them back. You know, there wasn't any sending them in and then waiting, calling them, asking them if they're done yet. Um, there wasn't any of that you know you had your day that was your spot um, and they they tailored your shocks to to you to your car to your driving style um, and I think that that that's a pretty cool uh, way of going about it um, and the other thing was their their customer service uh, and this isn't unique to us you know this isn't like because we're making this video they treated us any different um, I was emailing back and forth with them a lot uh, and they were very cordial and responded to every single one of my emails uh, in a very timely fashion and if there was any 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 confusion in the email they called me and they were like you know it's easier to just be on the phone you know let's get this sorted out uh, they worked with us from the very beginning all the way to the very end to make sure that we were satisfied with the way uh, the shocks were were handling uh, they never <clears throat> left us out on our own uh, so I I want this a big shout out to uh, shock therapy on that they really they go out of their way to, to take care of you and to make sure that your shocks are set up properly um, and even their their shipping you know I mean I was blown away at how at how well they were packaged to see how they they take the time to package them um, and make sure that your product is taken care of you know your shot your shocks are taken care of that was really exciting too um so into the review part uh right off the bat i'm gonna say 10 out of 10 would do again probably one of the uh the best investments for these types of cars that i think you can make um one of the things that i noticed right off the bat in the very beginning I don't want to take anything away from the stock suspension on the X3s because I think that you know they're probably some of the the best suspension that you can have on these cars uh, on a, a UTV at the moment. But the, the slow speed chop, you know, the chatter bumps on the stock suspension was just horrible. Uh, I honestly think that that going at a higher speed was more comfortable in those cars than. Than, than going slow just because that that slow speed chop was just so stinking annoying and you there's nothing you could do there was no setting you could put those shocks on to make that go away um, going over the little teeny bumps just just vibrated you and it sucked um, uh, and aside from that so they want your ride height to be at 16 inches and I think the cars come at like 12 or 13 and uh, the Fox recommendation is 15 so in any any way you run your 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 car shock therapy wants you to be higher um, and I was nervous about being up that high it's mainly because of the amount of body roll and the, the control of the vehicle I, because they have a very low center of gravity, and, and I like that because you can you can really get into the turns, you know, and you, you just feel like the car's planted. So I was nervous that the car was going to be more boaty up there, especially with all of the shocks being as soft as they are. And there is no body roll. Um, the valving in those shocks are are awesome. The car always felt planted, even at 16 inch ride height, and having the the uh, slow speed compression barely turned on at all 
it, it was there was like no boatiness to it at all, which was fantastic. Um, and the whoops, I mean, that's what we hit today. So last year when we hit those whoops, uh, I think, yeah, I mean, we struggled maybe to get 70 miles an hour. And today, I mean, I look down. I know you don't ever look. I don't look down. You don't look down. He's always looking. That's probably why I, I rolled because I, I don't. He, he, I know another guy that always looked down at his speedo all the time. And he always knew exactly how fast he was going right before he crashed. So I like to keep my eyes forward and go as fast as I feel comfortable. And we were getting right with it today. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. So I, I did look down <laughs> and I saw that uh, my speedometer was 85, um, which, yeah, is a full 15 miles an hour faster than last year. Uh, and on top of the fact last year at 70 miles an hour, those whoops were so violent that they knocked my goggles off um so in the last year's runs i mean obviously i only put you know the good clip in you know i didn't put the clip in where i was losing my goggles because that's what it, you know you can't really sell you, don't show that. you, you can't you can't <laughs> sell that um but it knocked my goggles right off uh and then today just pedal to the metal floating just comfortable man I, it I can't say enough like it I don't even think the video is really probably gonna do it justice we watched them right before we did this review and it's pretty evident it's pretty clear you know that the movement inside the the cab is significantly less at higher speeds so obviously you know there's there's a significant improvement there uh, but I just I, I don't think you're really gonna get it you know unless you rode in it um, but even the, at slow speeds, I mean, it's it's different. Everything's different about the way the car handles now. It's even going half speed. It's not rough like it would be before. You either had to hit it hard and try to float over top of them. Now, I mean, I was slowing down on the backside of the whoop section going half speed, and it was just so much smoother. Everything about the suspension is so much nicer yeah. than, the, than the stock suspension is. Turning, everything. Yeah, Everything's nice. those whoops or the, the bumps, not not whoops so much, but the bumps and the turns. Um, so actually the whoops out there today, I think are probably a little bit worse today than they were when we ran it the first time. Because when we ran it the first time, it was towards the end of the season. So there had, you know, riders have been beating on the whoops all year long. Um, today... They're fresh, man. They were wind wind whipped and weather ridden. They were pretty violent. Every turn that we went around out there was was just up and down. And I noticed right away when we got out there that first turn we hit that had the big ups and downs in it. Yeah, it was like it was flat. <laughs> I did, right away I was like, wait, I didn't even feel that. Right. You know, you're going into it and you think, you know, you kind of grab the wheel and you think you're going to slow down because you're you're just expecting something and just right over it. Yeah. Um, Your vision's playing games on you. You thought there was moguls there and there it must have been flat because you didn't feel anything. <laughs> no kidding. Um, but yeah, uh, and then what? There was that spot uh, right at the back of the, the G out section or the, the whoop section where you you'd float over it there was like a dip and it came up and there was like two little whoops and then a dip again last year when we would hit that i was too afraid to hit that at any kind of speed because once you hit the little dip and then the the second lip at the top would always feel like it wanted to kick the rear end up yeah your rear end would hit that and it would it would like to nose dive you yeah i was actually too afraid to hit it today because i remembered that but I watched him, and I know we got some good footage of it. Wide open. He just, whew, right over that thing. And it does the same thing. Your ass end still hits that lip, but it just flattens. The suspension reacts totally different now. It just flattens your car out. Just flattened me right out and, you know, went right over it. Didn't get goofy. Didn't. Yeah. I was white knuckling it the first time, and then after that, it was just fun, you know, so... And that's the thing right there, that last phrase. It was just fun. So regardless of how you drive your car, regardless of if you're a high speed driver, slow speed driver, um, and it doesn't even matter. This isn't an X3 thing. You know, they do this type of stuff for Polaris. They do this stuff for Yamaha. Um, it 
it is there it is worth it for everybody of all types because just like he said you know there were some times where you hit stuff and you're just kind of afraid at how the car is going to react because it's kind of unpredictable it is so predictable now that you just your confidence level goes up so high it takes a lot of the anxiety out of doing like aggressive maneuvers because the car just it it just reacts to the terrain so much better um and and i really i can't say enough about it, it it's it is really really something special um yeah yeah it was awesome well and we were doing this in the snow too i know we beat the snow down quite a bit towards the end there but at the beginning the, the trails were well, that whoop section was pretty slick and yeah. it, it still handled really good the traction wasn't quite there we got higher speeds towards the end of end of the day but um it even felt better than uh today with it being slick like this than it did last year with the trails being with no snow with with good conditions with the stock suspension yeah it, it felt better today so how's that you know last year completely dry conditions with stock suspension now completely frozen trails just weather beaten covered in snow and we're still getting higher speeds and we're still more comfortable um I know a, a true comparison would be to go back out there, you know, and do it in the same in the same condition, and maybe we will, you know, later on in the year we're gonna be riding all year. Maybe we'll do another one. We will, we will. But today, this would kind of conclude part, you know, part three of our shock therapy experience. Um, I truly hope that it was beneficial to you guys if you were considering something like this. I know, you know, in hindsight this may have been the first mod that i would do uh rather than probably one of the last um it's always nice to have more power um, and you always have to make sure that your clutches are running right but it's such a big difference that i i would probably start here next time uh, had i known and you're actually you are actually starting here because i'm starting here and that's the thing you can have all the power in the world but if you can't put it to the ground there's no point so right i know you have a lot you have quite a bit more horse than I do, at least for another couple weeks. <laughs> but uh, so I'm doing a little different than what Aaron did, and it's still going to work out the same. Yeah. But uh, I can't wait to get some more horsepower on that thing and, and really let it eat. So. Yeah. So yeah, I hope this was fun for you guys because it was certainly fun for us. Um, huge thanks to to Shock Therapy for dealing with all of my annoying emails. Um, you guys were great. And uh, if you have any questions about, you know, what they can do for you, by all means, um, shoot them an email. I'll put their contact information in, in the description below. Uh, but until next time, three weeks until Silver Lake opens, and you bet we're going to be there. Um, so stay tuned, and we'll see you guys soon. See ya. See ya.